Hi, this is Bobby. I'm at Iridescent in New York City, and today we're going to be building a contact microphone and an instrument to amplify with our contact microphones. Can anybody tell me what this little metal disc is? What do you think? A contact, contact microphone? <laughs> okay, jumping the gun a little bit. It's not exactly a contact microphone. It's called a piezo electric. Yes? Piezo electric microphone? Yeah, it is basically a piezoelectric microphone. Now, remember, what is the job of a microphone? It turns what energy into what energy? It turns sounds into e electrical energy. Yes, it turns sounds into electrical energy. So different microphones work in different ways. The way a piezo electronic microphone works is a piezo, if I were to disturb it a little bit by like tapping it or rubbing it, I'm actually changing, I'm moving around this crystal inside. It's a very special crystal. And that crystal, when it's moved like this, it makes an electrical signal. So, the basic thing we're going to do to make our contact microphone is we're going to take one of those, these piezoelectronic discs and we're actually going to connect it to something that looks like, when you plug your headphones into like an iPod, this is the thing you're plugging in. So we're going to make our microphone plug into one of these so that we can either plug it into a computer or into an amplifier. So we're going to make an electrical attachment between our piezoelectronic microphone leads, the wires coming out of it, and the, the headphone jack. Okay, the way we do that is headphone the following. Jack. So either you can take an old pair of headphones and cut the cord off. What? Yep. Yeah. Or you happen to have a new, pair. a new pair of headphones, you can cut the cord off too. But if you can get a connector like this, which has two ends sticking out like that, then, and it's just a wire, you can cut that in half. Why don't you go ahead and cut that in half, Bella? Can I do it? Oh. Okay, so look, now I've got two wires with one end looking like that and the other end looking like a headphone jack. Okay, next step. We're going to take the pla basically take the plastic that's protecting the wires off so that we can touch the wires themselves. So the way I'm gonna do that is by sort of using, I have this nice wire stripper and it pulls the plastic off and it leaves all the stuff inside intact. So now you notice when I open this wire up, now these vary, they don't all look the same. So it may be that if you do this with your own wire at home, it doesn't look exactly like this, but they'll all look similar to this. So, you notice when I open it up, I've got all these copper little wires, kind of little hair sticking out, and I've also got two colored wires. Okay. So, we're going to all do this together, but what I want you to do is you're going to take all those little hairy wires, because we actually need the little hairy wires, I'm going to pull them off to the side, and you're going to... Twist it. Twist it up into a little bit of a bundle. And what like are we going to cut them off with? We're actually not going to cut them off. We, we want them. them twisted into a little bundle like that. So okay. that's the first step. The next step is, you see the wires, this particular wire has what three wires in it? You tell me, Bella. White, red, and, and copper. Yeah, and the copper one, the, the white one, the red one, and this one that's just not covered with anything. So we're going to start by we're gonna we're gonna care really most about the white one and the copper one. The red one we're not really gonna care about. So I'm gonna have you strip the insulation off of the white wire. So if you take this stripper, wire stripper, I'm gonna stick it into this slot, close it all down. Squeeze, and now pull the wire out, I stripped off the extra, great. We're going to be using a soldering iron like this one, which is very hot, so be careful. We're going to use a soldering iron to make a nice, strong electrical connection between our piezo discs and the wires. Um, in order to do that, what we do is we take the piezo wire and the wire we want to solder it to, we twist the two together so they look like that. Once they're all nice and twisted together by hand, we touch that wire to the soldering iron. We add a little bit of solder. Solder is metal that looks like this. It comes in a spool or different forms. And it has a really low melting point. So the soldering iron is able to melt this metal, it gets liquid metal, it melts onto the junction of those twisted wires. And then as soon as we take it off of the heat, it cools down again, and that liquid solder becomes solid solder. And there's now there's a nice solid good, strong connection. Okay, we, just, we need to wait a minute for that now. Do you guys all have piezos? You've got two wires coming out of the piezo, and only two wires out of these three that we care about. Remember if we said, if you have a white, a red, and another one, the red one we're not gonna care about. We're making the connection between the white 
and the other two. And it actually doesn't matter which of these goes to which, so long as each one is connected. Here's how you do it. You take the two wires, and the two wires start like this. They're laying next to each other. And then you grab them and you twist them around each other. So Jaden, could you give me your two index fingers like this? So you first start by laying them out, and then you twist them around each other like that. And then they get all intertwined. So I'm going to take, see the little wire, tiny wire, coming out of here. I'm going to take it and wrap it around the other wire. Wrap, twist. And now they're kind of bound up together like that. That's what it needs to look like before you solder it. Okay, all right, I'm gonna try using my fingernails. I kind of gotta squeeze it fairly hard to get it to work well. Okay, I want to see if you can do the other one too. I will hold them, and I'd like you to twist. Oops, these ones came undone. Isn't that unfortunate? You, Bella, are gonna take this solder, push the solder into the soldering iron. Instead, she wants to push it right into the metal that we're trying to connect. It might not immediately start melting into it, but if you wait a moment for the metal that we're trying to connect to heat up, then it should melt into it and it should make a nice connection. So I'm going to hold the metal on the iron. I want you to push your solder right onto the top of those two wires. Yep, just hold it right there. Wow. Right into the top of them. A little more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Nice, you're done. So you can pull away. You see a little smoke coming out. And now, do you see that little connection there? It's a very small thing, but now those two wires are totally connected. We're adding solder, we're adding metal that melts at low temperature, and we're connecting things. Now believe it or not, at this point, you've connected a microphone to a plug. This is it, this is a contact microphone. And have every person test their microphone by plugging it into our amplifier and seeing if the amplifier picks up on any sound. Okay? All right, let's test the next one. I can't wait for mine. You can't wait. You're going to have to wait a minute. Okay, let's see. Is yours working, Jade? Hello. Okay, okay, okay. It works. You know what kind of tape this is? And what is special about like electrical tape? Why is it especially good for us in this application? It's for electrical tape. It's a, for electrical things. So electrical tape, does it conduct electricity or not conduct electricity? It does not conduct. It does not conduct electricity. That's why we like it with electrical things, because it prevents electrical things from conducting into each other and having electricity leak all over, basically. So what I'm going to ask you to do with your electrical tape is, because these little connections are very weak, you're going to take those little wires and tape them nice and firmly to the big fat wire so that now if you pull on this by accident it won't harm it. And then uh, we also would be, it would be a good idea to use a little tape around these connections just to cover them up. Additionally, if you have crazy wires hanging out that you don't need, you can use scissors. You just cut the ends of the crazy wires, just neaten up a little bit so it looks nice and pretty like that. Do you think there's enough electricity to use to like get hurt if you touch the wires on this? No, of course not. No, there's That's not. There's not enough electricity in a microphone to harm you. I'm gonna go get the materials to make our geo boards and then we will use our microphones to explore the world of sound. Explore the world of sound. Just like that. A little bit of that too. Be right back. Oh yeah, we made songs. We are now going to make an instrument out of a piece of wood. We use half inch thick MDF. Um, MDF? What is yeah, it? Yeah, this is called MDF. It's a medium density fiber board. It's just kind of a sort of, you could use any old kind of wood you want really. Fiber board. Uh, we use this stuff. And uh, what we're going to do is drill some holes in it, stick some bolts through the holes, yeah. and then stretch some rubber bands around those bolts and make an instrument. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do, everybody gets a square of MDF. And a pencil. So I want you to mark where you would like places for the uh, little strings to be strung. We're going to drill holes in these boards and we're going to make any kind of instrument looking thing you want to make out of it. Are you ready? Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm going to 
use a drill. I'm going to drill holes where you marked it, and then I'll show you how we're going to put bolts through those holes. I know, right? yeah, we did. Tight. Now, of course, you should only use a drill with adult supervision. Because a drill is one of those things, like a soldering iron, that can really hurt you. Once you have done all of your nuts and bolts, when you've got them all installed, you can go ahead and add rubber bands. Getting some good sounds out of this one, Bella. What have we made? Geoboards. Geoboards. And they're called geoboards because they have geometry, geometry shapes. Yeah. Right? You can make like a lot of different shapes in the geoboards, that's why they're called that. Or you can make a lot of different sounds. So what kinds of rubber bands make what kind of sounds? Oh, what about, can, can somebody give me an example of a very low note on your oh, board? Oh, you should hear. Look. On your board? Boom, boom, boom. Can I hear a higher note? Um, just one note, just one note. Wait, hold so on. So all these notes are kind of quiet, it's kind of hard to hear. What can we do to make your geo boards easier to hear? You can use our contact microphone. Contact okay, so let's give it a shot. So we're going to plug the contact mic in. And then what we're going to do with the other end of it? Wait, uh, uh, on top or under the board? Yeah, so I'll actually, I'll help you out. I'll just hold it on top so it's two fingers. I'm going to hold it on like this. And now I want you to try playing the board. Aha, uh -huh. now we can hear it a lot better, right? Because this contact microphone picks up sounds of whatever it's touching. contact mics to amplify our newly made geoboard instruments. What else do you think we could amplify with our contact mics? Yeah? Oh, you, oh, yeah. Inside of you. Inside of you? You could try listening to, for instance, you Ayana, could you, throw, could you put the contact microphone right about here on your throat? Yeah, and push it in with your finger and I'm going to turn up the volume and I want you to breathe in. Hear her breathing because the contact mic is in contact with what? Well, the lungs are down here. What's up here? Your throat. Your throat. And the air is going through the, the windpipe, right? The air is going right through your windpipe. You're hearing that. Cool, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what if you speak? It's fine. Now, why can we hear that so well? Because the air goes there. Because what? What's down here that has to do with your voice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your voice box. And you're putting that thing right on your voice box, right? What are you putting it on? Voice box. Yes, <laughs> voice box. Incredible, right? It's a really sensitive thing. Two more examples of things that we can listen to really, really closely, really carefully uh, using a contact microphone. It's like cool stuff. There's a little water in here, and I want you to put your microphone in the water. In that water, actually. Water. Sounds like nature. That's kind of sounds like Wow! Now here's another like, really cool surprising thing. Normally, without the contact microphone, can you hear much coming out of the slinky? No. Not really so much, but no. in fact there is a world of sound going on inside the slinky. <laughs> Okay, so contact microphone is a cool way to hear the insides of lots of things, like the inside of water and the inside of a slinky and anything you can touch it to that makes any sort of sound, you can hear with that sound. Yeah. You can hear. So the last thing I'm going to show you guys um, is how to use a contact no, microphone because not everybody has an amplifier like this at home. I'm going to show you how to use uh, a mic like this with pretty much any computer. 
um, using some free software you can download online. Okay, so there is a free piece of software, it's called Audacity, and Audacity you can download for free off the internet, for Mac or for PC, and Audacity is really good sound editing software. For us, we can use it to record using our microphones. So if you'd go ahead and plug this into the microphone input of the computer, which is that one, and now it's very simple. All I need to do is make sure that the microphone is selected as the input device, and... Let's see if I push record. See that? It's hearing all the flicking. And now let's do some table recording. So do a little scritchy scratchy on the table. You see and you how you can it see it's recording all that sound there. All right, now I'm going to push stop. Now that's probably going to be pretty loud, but I'm going to go ahead and play back by pushing the play button what we've recorded. Okay. So I'm going to stop. So that's recorded one track. I could record many tracks on top of each other. You could make your own song. You could have like the instrumental track, and then the slinky track, and then the breathing track, and then the singing track. And you could record all those tracks on top of each other and move them down and change their volumes using this Audacity software. You can also, in case you're a person without an amplifier in your house, you could, if you go into the preferences, there's a checkbox for software playthrough or hardware playthrough. What that will do, I'm just going to delete this track, is while it's recording, it will work like an amplifier. So you can use your computer as an amplifier in case you don't have an amplifier like that. The contact mic's specialty is picking up vibrations. Vibrations not in the air, that's what a regular microphone would pick up, but it's especially good at vibrations of things that's actually touching. Do you have any interesting things you want to try using your contact mics on at home? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like dog. On your dog? Like what part of the dog are you can put it on? Yeah. On the dog's throat. And then maybe if you can get the dog to bark, it'll like really kill it. Like a wolf. Or you know what also might be cool is a cat's purring. Because if you've ever been petting a cat and you hear that purr, it's like a vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. The whole point of making something interesting and different like this is you can try all sorts of different things.